Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Michelle Graff, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief at National Jeweler. I'm pleased to welcome you to the latest episode of my next question, National Jewelers Webinar Series. Today's session is hosted by our Senior Editor, Breck and Brandstrader, and features Carl Weiss, owner of Infinity Diamonds in Port Charlotte, Florida, Yale Reinhold Lipnick, President of Reinhold Jewelers in Puerto Rico, and John Fierst, Vice President of Global Risk Services and Analytics at Jewelers Mutual Group. Before I turn it over to Brecken to get the webinar started, I just want to let our attendees know that if they have a question, they can type it into the Zoom Q&A box at the bottom of their screens. I will be back on after the discussion to share any questions. Also, today's session is being recorded and will be available on the National Jeweler website this coming Thursday, November 10th. Now, I'll turn it over to Brecken and her guests, and I'll be back to field any questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction, Michelle, and thank you to my panelists for being here today um, for this very important conversation. So we know that we're seeing instances of severe weather increase across the board, of course, and for jewelers, that means new challenges when it comes to keeping their stores and their teams safe. So I'm really grateful to you all for being here for these two retailers who are here to give us their perspective and of course the very important um, insurance component to chat about today. So Carl and Yell, I wanna start with you guys. Um, you have stores in Puerto Rico and Florida, of course, respectively. Um, so tell us a little bit about how, maybe to start how your um, stores were affected by Ian and Fiona and um, where you're standing now, I think. So well, um, yeah, in, here in Port Charlotte, you know, our, our county took a direct hit so yeah. I was expecting a lot more damage than we had. I am in a uh, seven unit strip center, kind of right in the middle of the unit. And um, units on either side of me have some structural damage and some leaks in the ceiling. So I was expecting the worst, but uh, a couple of rows of ceiling tiles kind of collapsed and got wet. Uh, we didn't have electricity or internet services for eight days. And then on the ninth day, we did reopen after some cleanup. Um, since then, like my experience with Hurricane Charlie, business has been crazy. Really? Yes. It's um, My experience with Hurricane Charlie was all of a sudden there's all this extra money pumped into the economy. Uh, I think contractors who were typically living day to day or week paycheck to paycheck now have some extra money in their pocket. Christmas is right around the corner, and I, I see them spending, you know, that cash um, pretty quickly. Oh, wow. Okay, that's very interesting. And what about you, Yal? What are you guys seeing now? We were fairly lucky with, um, with the most, with Fiona. Our stores are in malls, so we're generally protected. Uh, both towns that we're in were not damaged as much as other parts of the island, um, but one store was closed 11 days. The other mall was closed three days. So we, you know, we had some business disruption, but all our employees were fine. Their homes were fine. And so we count our blessings. With That's this great. Working. And did you notice anything similar to Carl in terms of or how was business once you guys were operating again? Was it pretty back to normal pretty quickly? Our business was pretty back to normal. We have not <laughs> noticed the uptick that Carl did, but hopefully that's coming. Yeah, for sure. Um, so tell me, did you guys have time to prepare your stores? Um, and if so, what kind of things did you do um, to prepare, whether that be physical, insurance-wise, those kinds of things? Well, I made sure when I left that I took a copy of my policy and my contact information for the uh, agents that I do business with. I also made sure to take important things off the floor, paperwork, books, um, stuff like that, just in case there was any kind of damage that allowed water to come inside. Um, and then, uh, you know, made sure the store was secure and uh, left town. Okay. I, so like Carl, we did many of the things Carl just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, because we're in a hurricane zone, obviously like Florida, there's things that we're just prepared for like our servers are in hurricane proof facilities, offsite, um, everything we do financially and accounting POS wise is in the cloud. You know, so there's things that just won't be damaged. Um, one thing Carl didn't mention that I'm sure he did, but just to highlight, we have a communication tree with staff 
set already. And so we just revised that, updated it, reminded everyone of what that would look like, making sure we're prepared before, during, and after for, you know, our employees. Okay. Makes sense. So looking back on it now, was there anything um, in hindsight that maybe you forgot to do or realized you didn't do that you wish you had? Uh, I, I had an exterior sign that I should have taken down and brought in that I did not take down and bring in something that is like a banner type sign on some common ground out near the major road. And uh, so that was destroyed, but it wasn't a very expensive sign and my insurance company covered it. But mm -hmm. For the lack of, um, you know, the annoyance that it was to have to go through that process, if I would remove the sign, brought it inside, and then you know put it up afterwards, it would have saved me a little time and money. Okay, interesting. Is there anything for you, y'all, that you can think of? Not in this most recent hurricane, okay. but previously, things that we had forgotten were to take things off the walls that could end up flying, like paintings or mirrors, um, and then covering okay. electronics with plastics just to protect them with right. flooding, like a roof falling in or something. Oh, okay. Um, so John, I wanna throw it to you now. So from an insurance perspective, um, what should jewelers be thinking about or doing, I guess, right prior to a storm hurricane, um, that, those kinds of bouts of severe weather? Yeah, so <clears throat> storms coming your way. And fortunately with hurricanes, you can see the tracks. You have a pretty good idea of where it's gonna be heading. Not always, I mean, it can, you can see some uh, last minute diversions, but you know, at least um, it's, it's uh, technology and, and science has gotten to a point where you can see where that storm is tracking. So for good things from Carl and Neil already on what they've done, what comes top of mind for me and first and foremost is life safety. Certainly you don't wanna place yourself in you know, a bad position that comes first, follow all evacuation orders, certainly. Um, secondly is secure the stock, secure the inventory. Um, Get it into your on-site uh, safe or vault. Uh, bonus points if you can get it to a uh, you know a bank vault uh, or a, a secure facility like Melka Meat. Jewelers Mutual Insurance Company does uh, fund for our policyholders getting stock off-site and into a Melka facility, and then for a nominal fee um, to be stored uh, until that storm is passed and, and everything is is um, is safe again. Next one I, I talk about would be um, secure your store. Uh, Certainly uh, boarding up windows is a good thing. There's a lot of debris flying around, taking out windows, letting the elements in. If you can board up those, uh, those windows, that's a good uh, preparatory thing to do. Jewelers Mutual Insurance Company can benefit from uh, discounted uh, through, through Service Master. They can come out and, and uh, board up your store. That's a good option. Next, uh, and this is looking at if you do have a loss, think in terms of having my financial records, my inventory, um, insurance paperwork, have that with you or have it accessible virtually. You're gonna need that um, in the event that you do have a loss. And then finally, a very simple thing, but a good practice. Everybody's got a, got a camera phone, take a video of the inside of your, of your store. If you do have a loss, that's gonna be invaluable to share with the adjuster to help them put you back in the same condition you were prior to the loss. Oh, okay. Does that sort of just have like proof of what state you're in right before or something, anything happens? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Any, anything you can, anything you can provide to that adjuster in the event of a claim, let him see what was your store like prior to the loss. They can help then uh, get that uh, that money coming your way to help uh, get you back up and running again. Okay. Wow, those are great. Thank you, John. And actually, I was curious, um, Yale and Carl, what did you guys do with your inventory in preparation? Uh, I we we locked it up in the safe and left it in the safe. I I, I put one hundred percent of my inventory was in the safe. Got it. And we, we put our high value items in the safe and left others out. But once again, we're in the middle of a mall. So it's right, right. Different. a little bit of a different situation. Yeah. Um, okay. And then, so John, another question then from an insurance perspective, what should, what would you tell a jewelers to be thinking about doing sort of right now when something isn't going on then? What should they be um, looking at? When yeah, ab that? absolutely. You don't want to be uh, scrambling at the last minute when you have the storm uh, bearing down on you. A very timely topic is validating insurance to value. So inflation has been, been taken off, right? So everything is much more expensive. Um, take an inventory. Is, is the amount of um, limit you have on your policy, is that enough to cover the inventory if you had a total loss? 
uh, look at your uh, your property policy and you have enough coverage for business personal property. So if you were if your store was to be wiped out, the interior furnishings, is the limit of insurance sufficient to put you back in the same position you were prior to the loss? If you own your store, um, the building limit, you know, with the way inflation and, and building materials, uh, you may not have enough coverage. That's something definitely to, to work through with your agent and make sure you increase your limits to match what your, uh, what your true exposure is. Another thing is um, battery backup for alarm systems. You know, you can, you can assume when the storm goes through, you're gonna lose power for a period of time. You want your alarm still in play because that exposure of, of, uh, of burglary still exists. Many of the systems come with just an eight hour backup. Jewelers Mutual recommends a minimum of a 72 hour backup. It's not an expensive uh, improvement to make, but it's a, it's a very good one. And it also, not only from a storm standpoint, but um, burglars will go and trip alarms and wait for that uh, trip, trip the, uh, the power, sorry, wait to see if anyone comes. If no one does, they're, gonna, they're probably gonna hit that store. So if you can have that, uh, that battery backup in play, that gives that extra level of protection. Uh, another one sometimes people don't think about is there's a there's a demand surge. So a storm is coming in, everybody's running to Home Depot, they're picking up plywood. You know, a simple thing would be to pick up sheets of plywood and store it somewhere so you have that ready to go. You know, especially people living in Florida, Puerto Rico, having that on hand because, you know, you're going to see storms in the future, then you're not uh, under the gun if you need it with the storm right. approaching. Um, another thing I can think of is scoping out options for offsite storage. If you don't have enough storage on site or um, you, know, you, you just want to be super secure, talk to your local bank, see if they have the capacity to take your, take your inventory uh, in-house, see if there's a Melka facility nearby. It's good to have these relationships built so you're not scrambling at the last minute to try and, uh, try and figure that out. And lastly, uh, is a business continuity plan. That's a, that's a good idea. If the worst of the worst happens and you're, you're, um, you're out of business due to a loss for a period of time, having that plan in place, sharing that plan with, with key vendors, key partners that you might, might have a, um, a relationship with, uh, it, it's very helpful for when, uh, when these events occur. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, so now let's look a little bit about, you know, sort of afterwards. So Carl and Yale, as jewelers that sort of have to be prepared for this, you know, you live in areas where this is kind of a constant threat. And now that you've gone through it, what tips um, would you give other jewelers, I guess, looking back on these situations now? I guess, um, I guess the biggest thing I think about is to, um, you know, prepare for the worst and just hope for the best. So, um, you know, like John was saying, to have materials, I do have, you know, extra ceiling tiles, I have drywall, I have a lot of paint. Um, so I also take uh, phone numbers of, uh, I have a glass storefront, so I take phone numbers of glass companies, uh, contractors that I can contact immediately after the storm if I need some type of service to get on their, you know, on their waiting list, so to speak, as soon as possible. So um, I, I do you know, always hope for the best, but, you know, after doing two of these in 18 years, I, I expect some, some damage. I expect some downtime and, uh, you know, I, I was right at the point of going to the Miami jewelry show the oh, weekend wow. that it hit. So now my thought goes to, okay, how much, what is my budget? How's my budget change now? Because we had a hurricane and I, I end up not being able to make the show because I came back to take care of my store in my house during that weekend. But my thought about, okay, what's my budget going to be now for fall purchasing, for building that, you know, that, uh, that inventory towards Christmas. So all those thoughts yeah. kind of entered, entered play at that time. Yeah, that's interesting. And what about you, Yael? Anything you would tell other jewelers? Um, one thing I think is really important, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but Think about your employees, your store will be there. You know, if you can prepare it in advance, for the most part, everything's going to be okay, but make sure that your employees are safe, they're secure, mm -hmm. they have their needs met because they're coming back and giving their all and without them, it doesn't Absolutely. matter if your infrastructure is okay. Right. So it's sort of the people first thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know that we have a few listeners, I think, um, who are joining us also who have just been through the hurricane. So anybody who's listening and wants to add comments, we would welcome them. Um, other tips and advice, please feel free to drop them in the chat because I think it's really important to sort of, you know, share what you've learned through these things and what to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, 
And John, I have a question for you too about, you know, when you're looking at sort of the after effects when a jeweler is dealing with after a storm, is it, is there anything specific to that situation in terms of tips or recommendations um, afterward that you would give them? Sure, sure. So the storms come through, you've realized, you know what, I've got some, some damage that's taken place. Uh, the first thing we'd ask you to do is secure the property. Anything you can do to, uh, without putting yourself certainly in, in harm's way, but, uh, you know, if there's, if, if a glass uh, window has been taken out and you see uh, water rain pouring in. I mean, if you can board that up, secure that from any further damage, clean up uh, any water that's on, on, the, uh, on the floor, just you know, simple things like that is a, is a good first practice. Um, call your agent, that's what they're there for. They're there to, to guide you through the process, call your agent, call your insurance company directly. They will set the stage for what the expectations are for filing the claim. They call it first notice of loss. They'll take some detail in on what is what has taken place? Ask what type of material um, documentation they'll need to help with the, uh, the the claim settlement process. But that'll kick it off. Is is uh, reach out to your agent. They'll guide you through this process. Right. Start to document the loss. Um, take photos. Take take video. Remember that before and after. You've had that before uh, uh, video that's been taken of your store. Now you've got the after, and you can you can have that compare and contrast. Provide that to the adjuster. That's going to be invaluable to them in helping put you and make you whole, putting you back into the same condition prior to the loss. Gather uh, pertinent information. You're going to launch your uh, your latest inventory. Any financial records from a from a business interruption claim standpoint. That's all going to be helpful to the process. Okay. And uh, finally, I'd say be patient. Uh, we call these uh, cat losses, catastrophe losses for a reason. It, it affects a number of, uh, of, um, of insureds across that area. Those adjusters are gonna get to you as quickly as possible, but I know sometimes it, uh, it seems to take a little bit longer than you'd like, but um, you know, I, I think patience is, is always a good, uh, a, a good mode. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, I wanted to talk about one of the, um, there's a fund that Jewelers America and DCA have started, but Yal and Carl, for you guys, was there any, um, I just wanted to see if there were any resources you guys would recommend, or was there any sort of local thing happening to sort of help take care of the, um, the businesses after this, after the hurricanes hit? Well, um, you know, FEMA was in the area immediately for right. disaster aid and, uh, you know, the essentials, you know, um, they even brought in tractor trailers for showering and using a bathroom. In our county alone, we had 600 homes that were destroyed completely, no more, uh, no longer livable. Wow. And the real estate market here has been really crazy for the last couple of years. Rental properties were almost non-existent. So there were a lot of people in shelters, a lot of people in you know, uh, FEMA facilities. Um, but you know, you, you, know, the, you know, grocery stores are closed. So unless someone has stockpiled you know, goods and, or services, that there, there really wasn't a lot. So it, it was difficult to get back in here the first few days, but it, it, it moved relatively quickly compared to 18 years ago when mm. Hurricane Charlie came along. I know the majority of people then were without power for three or four weeks, and this was a much more widespread event, and the majority of the people had power within 10 days. So the local authorities, FEMA, Florida Power and Light, they're learning lessons by all these events. And you're kind of getting us spoiled, you know, three weeks is a lot longer than 10 days. But after a week, people were complaining not to have power when, you know, there was power, we didn't have power for four weeks sometimes, you know. But um, yeah, the, I mean, the, the services came in really quickly, food, you know, water, ice, uh, gasoline, it came in real fast. So we, we were happy about that. That's great. Yeah, what were you saying afterwards? I wish Puerto Rico had the services that Florida did. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But once again, Fiona was a very different situation than Hurricane Maria. So we were very lucky. Um, but all the same, you know, patience is the biggest factor of just accepting that it's not normal. Things are going to take longer and just waiting it out. Yeah, that seems hard. Um, I wanted to note that before we go to listener questions or any other things we wanted to add that, um, as I mentioned before, Jewelers of America and the Diamond Council of America started um, the Jewelers Relief Fund a, a few years ago to help jewelers that have been impacted by disasters, natural or otherwise. Um, they opened it again in the wake of Ian and they're gathering funds still now through November 11th. Um, 
So we have here, a, this slide right here shows, um, there's a link, the GoFundMe, where jewelers can still donate for the next few days. So I wanted to make sure to call attention to that. Um, for anybody who wants to donate still, we're taking those. Um, and they'll, they'll pre keep reopening it as things hit, unfortunately. Um, but it's always there for resources as well for jewelers who wanna look into it, um, should they go through something like this in the future. I'm gonna drop that in the chat as well. Um, so you have a clickable link. Um, anybody who wants to find this, this is on the JA website. It's also on the National Jeweler website in an article. Um, reach out to us. We're also happy to send it straight to you. Um, before we go to listener questions, then, is there anything else you guys could, um, can think of that we should chat about for our, our listeners? In the meantime, anything else to add or that we should note? I would just add we've got uh, Hurricane Nicole will probably be a cat one. Um, starting early on Thursday. So everybody be safe out there and uh, best wishes. Yeah, great point, John. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay, well, I think we'll we'll move on then um, to Michelle and see if there were any listener questions and to close things up. Uh, thanks, Breck and Carl Yale and John. That was a great discussion. Um, as a reminder, you can still type questions into the Zoom Q&A box and we'll try to get to, uh, we'll get to questions here before we log off today. I have one so far. Um, so um, the, I, this is just my question actually it didn't come in from um, any of our listeners, but can you both tell me a little bit more about these communication trees? And I think, yeah, you mentioned this having it. How do you keep it? What is it exactly? How does it work? I think this is something useful for people. So this is a do as I say, not as I do, because um, we're not as good as, as we should be. Uh, but the idea would be like on a yearly basis, you literally develop an emergency plan for a hurricane or for any other like emergency situation that includes staff phone numbers, emergency contacts, who's in charge at each store, et cetera. Um, and then you review it on a yearly basis to make sure it's still current, everything you know, still makes sense for whatever your situations are in your region. Um, to the point of even doing like a tabletop drill where you can sit around a table and say, okay, a hurricane's coming, what would we do in this situation? And just make sure that everyone's really top of mind on the emergency plan. That can be a tornado's coming, that can be powers out. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a natural disaster, but just going through what you would plan for and making sure everything's set and everyone knows what that plan is on a regular basis. So would this be set up? I know we have, Breck, and I know we have an uh, emergency kind of tree set up here where if the office is closed, for example, because of a snowstorm, everyone gets a text message, but this is a more like set up in a way in case, you know, you have to physically call, like call people and you're not able to send texts or it's both? It's, it's both. So it would be, a text message would be included in it, but let's say you have a standalone store or our store in the mall and there's a power outage and it's dark. Do we have flashlights? Do we have, you know, what, what things would we need in that situation? And is it all set? Um, a, a natural disaster equivalent would be like a tornado versus a hurricane that obviously we have time to plan for. Um, and so the text message tree is part of that plan. Very good. Michelle, I have something to add. Um, after Hurricane Ian, we went several days with no cell phone service. Yeah, that's what we, I was wondering about. We couldn't like, text. We mm -hmm. couldn't call. The only service that worked immediately after Ian was T-Mobile. So if you had AT&T or Verizon or Comcast Xfinity mobile service, you didn't have any service. So, wow. and we experienced that after Hurricane Charlie as well. So what I did was I designated tasks, specific tasks for staff. So um, like one person was going to drive by the store to keep an eye on the power. Another person was going to see if there was any uh, glass breakage or damage to the exterior of the store that required immediate attention. Uh, another person was going to uh, be on call from the alarm company just in case we got a call and the alarm company was leaving messages that we didn't get because the phone service wasn't 
available. So we actually would have to drive 15 or 20 minutes away from town to get phone service. So uh, I think designating specific tasks or specific responsibilities to staff helped because we didn't have that communication immediately after the storm. And you, uh, that's that's pretty genius, actually, right? And you said, "Hey, we might not be able to contact each other out of the storm. This is what everybody's doing. You have right. your duties ahead of time. That's really smart." Um, right. John, do you have any? So I don't know. Were you going to say something? Do you have any thoughts on these phone trees? Yeah, that these these are good examples. This is that business continuity we talked about. So I, I appreciate my colleagues here mentioning that. It's just making sure, you know, it's your, your store, your employees, their family, right? And I mean, you want to make sure you're staying in contact with them, letting them know, because they're, they're going to be questioning too. It's their employment. You know, what am I supposed to do? How can I help? So having that um, that plan ahead of time on, okay, if something happens, you know, this is the mode we go into. That's that's It's good to think about these things ahead of time so you're not scrambling uh, after an event. Yeah, very good. Um, so uh, one more question. This is also for me. And John, you can jump on in this one too. When you have these storms, like I know, Yale, you dealt with Maria a couple of years ago, Carl uh, there in the West Coast of Florida, Ian was huge for you. Um, I mean, I wonder if there's ever any thought, any of these, these storms hit for retailers just to say, like, if you're devastated, like, is, is it even worth rebuilding? And John, do you see this at all with any clients that say, you know, this is just going to happen again? And, you know, it's just, this cost me a lot of money. It's just not worth, it's not worth rebuilding. Any thoughts about that? I guess, I guess it would depend on what stage of your career you're in. <laughs> you know, if you're 65 and it might take five years to build it back the way it was, and you have a decent retirement account, it might be motivation to, you know, close up shop or have a GOB and, and get rid of it. But, you know, you know, if I was 40 years old, yeah, I'd probably do anything to stay in the business. So I guess it depends on where you are in your career. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could also move it. I mean, if you. Yeah. Which is not cheap and not easy. No, of, not at all. A lot of goodwill. You lose a lot of goodwill by moving a store out of an area. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, did you want to add anything? Uh, no, it never occurred to any of us not to <laughs> <laughs> not to keep going. Right. I, I would add, th this is a passion for jewelers. This is their life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm an insurance guy. And, and uh, I would just say, you know, I, I know that's the last bill you want to you want to want to end up writing that check for is your insurance bill, but it's there to put you back in the same condition you were prior to that loss. So I'm going to go back to what I said before, work with your agent, make sure you have the adequate limits because you'd hate to get out of the business because you had inadequate insurance and financially couldn't get back into it. Uh, I guess I would encourage everyone, don't put yourself in that position. Yes, it's, it's an expense, but um, you know, it's, it's one of those expenses when you need it, um, you're going to be so thankful you have the appropriate coverage. Yeah, very true. Very good point, John. Well, unless that someone else has anything else to add, I think that's a good note to end on. Um, thanks again to all our guests today for joining us and to our editor, Brecken, for hosting. Uh, my next question will return next month with a special year end wrap up year end wrap up webinar featuring all four national jeweler editors talking about the highs and lows of 2022. Uh, in the meantime, you can view all past episodes of my next question on nationaljeweler.com backslash webinars backslash recorded. Thanks again for joining us today and please take care everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you.